I am about to absolutely doo doo caca on your game. And before you ratio me with dislikes, know that it's coming from a place of love. I don't like this game. This type of game isn't for me. But for the people who do like it, I would like this game to be good and succeed and be playable. Which, I mean, it is playable. So I've got a literal list of things that I found in my first six hours that I absolutely cannot stand about this game. And I'm going to go through them, but I'm also going to provide some feedback, which is why I say don't ratio me. I'm not just complaining. I'm trying to give an actionable solution. All right. So the way I've structured this list is actually based on my physical location in the game right now. I don't want to be running back and forth trying to show things off. So I'm going to start off with things that can be shown from within the hub. Number one, this game has an objectively terrible insurance system. It's bad. Insuring an item, yeah, it makes sense. You just throw it in your insurance window and call it good. You get a payout, whatever, that's fine, normal. It's not the best payout, it's not the worst, but it gives you something back. Unfortunately, if you say had a rare item and you wanted to keep that rare item, you have to put it in your gear salvage, which if we look at the price, this is an almost exclusively white setup, which is the least rare items in the game. To fully ensure this white setup, it costs 310 Ethereum, which is a cash shop currency that's also earnable through gameplay. The issue with this is this cash shop currency that you spend real money for, if you pay to do this, you pay real money to do this, you're not actually guaranteed to save your rare item. So theoretically, I could walk in here with blue backpack, blue shield, blue helmet, ensure all of that with real money and only get back maybe my backpack. Now, unfortunately, I've died four or five times with actual like salvage gear that I'm trying to keep because I like it or it's good or it's hard to get a hold of. I've gotten two things back from the entire salvage system. And I've probably, I've probably salvage insured eight to 10 items. I've gotten two back and they were both backpacks. Now, granted the backpacks in this game are extremely important and I'm glad that I got those back, but you don't get everything back. You pay real money for the currency or you wait an inordinate amount of time and you don't have a guarantee to get it back. Also, this system is time gated. So say I put on all my best gear. I pay to have it salvage insured. So if I die, I get it back. For me to get back my rare items that I've paid real money or put inordinate amounts of time into farming the currency for, I then have to wait 45 minutes. Now for me personally, I have usually about two hours a day to game. I'm an adult, I have a job. 45 minutes of my time with the setup that I like to use is now just gone. Unless I pay more real money to speed up the time limit, I assume. That is awful to the point that I don't even use the items that I like to use because I don't want to have to sit here and wait 45 minutes to get them back. I don't want to use this predatory currency system to ensure my items that I will then lose and wait 45 minutes to get back. The next day, maybe I get to play with them? No, that's not okay. So how do we fix this issue? How do we fix the insurance system right off the bat? Number one, if you're using a currency that costs real money, to salvage save an item that you want to actually keep. It's rare, whatever, you like it. Maybe it's sentimental value. Maybe you 1v squatted and took their gun and you want to keep that. That shouldn't be a question. If I've salvage insured it, I should get to keep it no matter what. I shouldn't get a fat cash payout. I don't want a fat cash payout. I can go farm cash. That's not an issue. The issue is I want my items. And so far for me, I've got about a 20% rate of getting my actual items back. If I've salvage insured something with a currency that costs real money, that should be a 100% guarantee that I get that item back. Now, another issue <laughs> with this system, if you're not paying real money for it. So you can look up here at the Orem generator section. I get 0.42 Orem an hour. Now, if you remember right, I want to say it was, what, 380 Orem to ensure my entire setup, backpack, armor, helmet, weapons, all of it, about 380 Orem, 0.42 Orem an hour. So we're looking at what? About 700 hours or more at base level to ensure a setup of white gear. Now I'm certain that it gets more expensive as your gear score goes up, which it needs to because if you're using white gear, you're basically just farming. You're, you're gonna die. You're feeding at that point. I understand that you have to upgrade your Orem generator in order to get this Orem in order to get your salvage items. The problem with that is how much it actually takes to upgrade your Orem generator. It's, I mean, it's a lot and nothing's guaranteed in this game. So, and it caps out at, I think, like 25 or 30 Orem stored total. And even with a fat Orem rate, you might be able to insure a full set of gear a week if you're not paying for currency. 
But how, how do we fix this currency system? So we can either bump up the gain, like just a flat increase to the gain that you get from this Orem generator so that maybe you can salvage insure a full set of white gear per day. If you have not even a maxed out Orem generator, even like a base level generator, I think you should be able to salvage one full set of white gear per day. Now, maybe you have to save up a little bit to salvage, you know, a full set of green gear, blue gear, purple gear, whatever. I get that. Or maybe you have to upgrade your generator a lot in order to do that a day. Maybe there's a point where after you upgrade your generator so much, you can then ensure an entire set of purple gear once a day. That would be okay to me. Not good, but okay. Alternatively, make the stupid fucking currency cosmetic only and bump up the cost to actually save the item to like half the item's price or maybe even more in order to actually keep your item. Say that I get a purple item off of a kill and I really like that item but I haven't unlocked it from that vendor yet. Maybe it's a 210,000 credit item. I pay 170,000 credits to ensure the thing but then I'm guaranteed to get it back. That should be a guarantee. If I put 170,000 credits into this item, I should be able to get it back completely consistently, honestly. Now moving on from <laughs> the really predatory insurance system, say you don't really care about insuring shit. You just want to get out and have a couple matches. You better fucking hope that you don't die. Because if you do, and you're using just base white gear, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using base white gear, AR-55, C-32 bolt action, a green shield, because I just happened to get one off a kill earlier. But in general, I go in with base white gear. The problem I run into is, if I die, for whatever reason, I've probably got it insured and I make some money off of it, cool. But then I have to go back and buy it again, which is okay. I understand that. The problem is I have to go into the quick shop, buy the weapons again, buy the ammo again, buy the armor and shield again, buy the consumables again, buy the mineral scanner again, and buy all of my attachments again. And I don't mind putting the currency into buying all these items again. What I mind is the fact that it takes so fucking long to do it. I have to sit here for five or 10 minutes if I die in a match and just reset all my shit. And this this could be a very simple, very innovative fix. Uh, implement a loadout buy system. I set up a loadout. So say that I really like the gear that I'm running right now. It's a good farming kit, whatever. I like the attachments. I like the backpack, the armor. This is what I like to run. I should be able to save this as a loadout, the inventory and the gear, and just have a loadout buy function. Maybe it costs me even a few extra credits credits or I just buy all of it in bulk at the same time but then I'm geared and I'm ready to hop into the next match it saves time and there's no real reason not to do it's not going to affect anybody to not have this as an option this next thing is I don't want to say it's small but it's probably the smallest thing like in the hub area uh, the quarters upgrades feel a little bit extra. There's a bunch of them. There's a whole lot of resources. Now, I, I understand that you need to have some level of replayability and something to shoot for in a game. I get that. It's just with how rare some of these items are, and you're not guaranteed to walk out of the game with these items. Obviously, that's how this game works. 15 circuit boards, 17 Korolev scripts for a mid-tier upgrade per level is ridiculous. The number of games you'd have to play and successfully extract from to get one of these upgrades. I'll tell you what, I've played probably 30 games so far and extracted from, I don't know, 20 of them, somewhere in that range. I've got one, two, three generators unlocked, one, two stash upgrades, and none of these upgrades. These I could have gotten pretty easily though on this page. I just haven't fucked with it yet because I don't care. That feels like a lot. Maybe it's not, but it feels like a lot. And this, this could be solved by either tuning the amount of materials required per upgrade tier or just increasing the amount that you get. You could very easily multiply a few of these and make a drop be worth two or three. And that would kind of help tone down. Like, look, look at this, 58 Korolev scripts that would that means I have to do 58 games and likely more. If I get a mission a game for Korolev, I need 58 games to get this tier of the upgrade. That is a ridiculous amount of time that this game is asking me to put in in a world where people don't have time. Your average play session for a video game for most people is about an hour to two hours. And this game is wanting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of play to even be competitive with people who do this full time. So this game is asking your average player who works a job, goes to school, plays an hour or two a day, 
to put hundreds of hours of effort in and very successful high skill effort at that just to stay competitive with people who do this like it's literally their job. That feels a little bit ridiculous to me personally. So now the bulk of what I think is wrong with this game. In a lot of battle royale games, you jump out of a plane and you choose where you go, right? Not so. You're dropping somewhere completely random. It doesn't give a fuck what you need for your mission. It's dropping you wherever. Your extract points are wherever. So we're gonna take a look at our map here. So I dropped by power plant. Say I need something in the lagoon. Say I need something at Waterfall Lab, way up in the corner. I now have to trek from here all the way over there with other players trying to kill me, which is fine. I get that. I get that most of the gameplay loop in this game is either avoiding or killing other players en route to doing what you need to do. My extraction points, though, are Southwest Collection Point and way down south. So if I need to go to Waterfall Lab, Southwest Collection Point, and this fucking rock are my extraction points. So I have to go all the way to Waterfall Lab and all the way back around here in order to get whatever I needed from Waterfall Lab. So right now I need a uh, pre silicon I don't know, fuck, some shit to make a backpack. All the way up here, all the way over here, or alternatively, all the way to Vaccine Labs and back over here, which that's annoying. It could very easily by f be fixed by implementing a drop control system. Maybe while my pod is dropping down, I can just fucking control it like in any other game in this genre except maybe Tarkov I don't know fuck about Tarkov but if you're looking at standard battle royale games you can control within reason where you're gonna drop and we're, we're gonna get into this a little bit more here in a second in terms of where we're dropping this is another big point here say I made a mistake on my loadout I've got yeah here's perfect I've got a marksman stock in my inventory I don't want that in my inventory now I have to put it in my safe pocket I can't just go back and get rid of it. If I bring the wrong weapons, I can't just go back and get rid of them. If I don't ensure my super rare purple weapon, I can't just go back and get rid of it. And you can notice your mistake on the fucking loading screen. And all you have to do is know that if you die, you're losing all of your shit. That's your only option. If you make a mistake with your loadout, you better hope that you fucking survive. This could very easily be fixed. Implement a 30 second grace period when you drop out of your pod to quit the game with no consequence. Even 15 seconds. Punish them for not noticing while they were loading that they fucked up. But a 30 second grace window will allow you to rectify those mistakes and jump back into the game without having to reset your entire kit because you lost all of it. And then having to wait 45 minutes for an insurance payout that may or may not give you your stuff back. Additionally, it kind of solves the spawn issue if you really just can't input control over the pods. If I spawn in a fuck-ass spawn location where I can't get to what I need or back to an extraction point anywhere near feasibly, I get 30 seconds, I can just drop out and reload. This isn't going to take the hot spots and make them not hot spots anymore. If anything, it's going to funnel people to them because you can get closer to where you need to be. People are going to be moving constantly trying to get to where they need to be, not just haphazardly trying to cross the map like a fucking chicken with its head cut off. So so there's that balance oh boy gear balancing and matchmaking are unbelievably biased against new players if you drop in here with white starter shit right off the bat more than likely you're gonna run up on somebody who's been playing longer than you in blue or green gear and your shit doesn't have the penetration to deal with their armor you're gonna sit there and shoot them like the little terrorist shooting at iron man wondering what the fuck is going on and why nothing is happening while you get gunned down like a child there's nothing you can do about it. At a certain point, if you're in white gear and the other guy's in purple gear, you're fucked. Like, you're just done unless you get the drop on them. And even then, they're probably gonna turn on you and melt you like a stick of butter. So match players based on a rough gear score. If you have 50 white gear players queuing for a lobby, maybe don't put two squads of players in purple gear in the lobby. And on that note, you might farm for 20 minutes and then run around a corner and come face to face with a squad of people in blue or purple gear in the same matchmaking queue that you are as a little white geared solo player and get absolutely fucking violated. And there's really nothing you can do then. So basically the way this is set up, the rich get richer and the poor and the new fucking die. That's all there is to it. Okay, this, this is going to be a very controversial opinion, and I know this because I did my background research. How do we fix running around for 20 minutes 
as a solo player and then getting ganked by a squad of purples. Implement solo queuing. I saw a shitload of clout chasers on Reddit earlier, absolutely bashing on people, trying to get karma because they asked for solo queuing. I mean, full on like flame war, borderline hate speech on people because they said, hey, maybe it'd be cool to have solo queuing. To the people who think like that and have that opinion, here's what I say. Fuck you. That's it. Fuck you. If you don't support solo queuing, there's probably a reason for it. And that reason is because you like to squat up with your friends and hunt down solo players. You enjoy squatting up, finding people who are just trying to farm, and blowing them to shit. And I've got news for you. That means you're probably a low skill player and a cunt. If you have an issue with solo queue being separated from team versus team, you're not willing to place your team against another team. You're not confident and you're a fucking loser. The majority of the fan base for this game, I'm trying to help in my own way, and I don't have an issue with. If you like this game, that's cool. But if you're one of the people who's out bashing folks for wanting a solo queue, even suggesting a solo queue, I dislike you as a person. I think you're a fucking asshole. Stamina. The stamina system. It's fucking obnoxious. I understand that there should probably be a stamina system. My issue is the map is fucking massive and it spawns you in bumfuck Egypt far as fuck from anything that you need to see. You better hope to Christ that while you're sprinting towards what you need, you don't run out of stamina in the wrong place or you're fucked. You have to crouch and stop to really quickly get stamina back and that's fine but it fucks up your flow and it's way, way too often. And also going into the stamina runny sprinty thing, Endemic life, monsters, aliens, whatever you want to call them. I understand that they need to be in the game, and it, it does add a cool element to the game. It really does. The issue is, the majority of my actual complaints with the gameplay loop itself, There, I already know there's going to be a ton of people who are going to dislike, fucking try to ratio me, and then get upset and say, oh, well, it's you, all you have to do is be better at the game. Ugh. Look, there's a lot of shit in this game that doesn't even care if you're good or not doesn't fucking matter. Case in point, endemic life and matchmaking errors. The servers, the servers don't give a fuck. <laughs> the servers do not care. But the endemic life, you're out there in the field running willy nilly towards whatever the fuck you need way across the map because you spawned way out in BFE and you know you got to run back to an extraction point that's way the fuck the other way. You come around a corner and you see a pack of striders, whatever. You can't really, you need to go that way. So you either run past them, the problem with that is you're sprinting, you're loud as shit, and you're not being that sneaky. So somebody can see you very easily, hear you very easily, and engage you very easily. Or maybe you shoot the fucking striders. I do. You've now wasted ammo, you freed up a little bit of inventory space and maybe even got a drop, but you wasted ammo and you also let everybody within a 5,000 kilometer radius know exactly where you are. You don't know where they're at. You might have some vague idea based on where you've been, where you haven't been, and maybe gunshots you've heard prior, but you don't know where they're at and they've got a much better idea where you are because of the endemic life. Either way, they very much damage any semblance of tactical gameplay. And there's no way to fix that. I think that's one of the only points on my list that it's going to be really difficult to do anything about that being an irritation other than just fucking deal with it. And sometimes you just have to fucking deal with things. The only thing I could think of to maybe make this better is make suppressors just a little bit more available. They're not the easiest thing to craft, especially with the odds of actually making it out with the resources that you need in a run. But the, the problem is I can't make myself go do that because if I'm trying to do that specifically and go get the things that I want to get in accordance with my goals, I get tilted with this game. So the only way I found to avoid tilt is to just go about it completely willy nilly and that puts me behind the power curve. It makes it hard for me to get the upgrades that I need to get and it just it makes the entire game not fun. I don't want to just go in willy nilly and hope I escape with something maybe. I want to find a goal and accomplish it. I want a gameplay loop that allows me to go out, kind of know what to expect, have fun, and then stop playing. I want to come home from an 8 hour shift, sit down on the game, 
and know kind of what I'm getting into and know that it's not gonna do me wrong. And that's what this game feels like it does, is do you wrong. It disrespects your time by trivializing it. It doesn't care if you have things to do, it doesn't care if you have certain expectations, all it cares about is that you load in and struggle. And it's, I guess, somewhat like Dark Souls in that regard, except the problem is the reward isn't there. It's not guaranteed. I can guarantee if you give it the time and the effort in a Dark Souls game to learn the boss, to gear properly, and beat the boss, you're gonna beat the boss. That's just how it goes. But there's no guarantees with the cycle. You might come home after an eight hour shift, terrible day at work, but you know you've got your fresh setup loaded up, your all blue gear, everything's insured, you're good to go, you're gonna have a good game. You come out the gate, you're pretty far from where you need to go, but whatever. You get shot in the back of the head halfway there by somebody you don't know where they're at, who they are, or what they're using until you're dead. And then 45 minutes later when you claim your insurance package, your shiny gear is gone, and you've got a fat check and a whole hell of a lot of crafting to do. And that to me is this company telling them that they don't give a fuck about our time, our energy, or us. All they give a fuck about is money. They want us to pay for premium currency to get a chance at saving our gear because they know we're going to take it because there's no other option. That gear is hard to get, you have to craft it, you have to kill somebody to get it, whatever. It's hard enough to get that you're gonna insure it for real world currency for a chance to save it. And that's predatory and it's bullshit. They can fix it. Maybe they can even take some inspiration from the things that I've said. But if they don't, please, for the love of God, don't give these people your money. Play for free and hop off as soon as you start feeling pissed off. That's what I'm about to do. And until next time, peace.